Hello, and welcome back to the Web Dev Coach, where my goal is to teach you web development. In the last seven videos, I actually finished the, re, uh, the Free Code Camp random quote machine in React. However, uh, since then, React hooks were announced. It's a new React API that I'm dying to have uh, some fun with. So, in this video, I'll be updating our random quote machine to use React hooks. Uh, stay tuned to the video. We'll have a lot of fun. Before we get started, I want to look back at our application and uh, remind you that nothing in the front end will change. The user won't see any changes. The application will um, work just as it did before. The only thing that will change is our code. Our plan of attack is to replace the uh, class component of app with a functional component. And that'll also entail replacing this dot state with um, the React hook called use state, and I'll show you how to do that. And we'll also be replacing this component did mount because functional components also do not have lifecycle methods. We'll be replacing component did mount with use effect, and that's uh, short for use side effect, basically um, for any lifecycle method that produces side effects in our component. So um, I'll be showing you how to do that. However, before we get started with any of that, will we, will we need to update our React uh, package. And to do that, we need to install React at next and uh, React DOM at next. So again, npm install React at next and React DOM at next to let us get the cutting edge features of React. Uh, press enter and I'll see you after these are all installed. Now that we updated our React package, we can start using use state and use effect to replace state and component did mount respectively. However, the first thing I want to do is make the app component a the app class component, I should say, a functional component. And this is done by uh, just typing in a function, deleting the extends component, and uh, adding parentheses like that. Since we're not accepting any props, we do not have to uh, place props as a uh, parameter here. So that's that. We now converted our class component into the functional component. Next, we want to replace uh, this dot state um, by using use state. So what I want to do first is comment out the constructor. That way I can refer back to the constructor and the old uh, the old state when I write new code. Of course, I'll be deleting the comments um, after they become unused, and I don't want to dirty up any code with unused code. Um, so let's write const, and we'll have one for quotes, and we'll have set quotes here. So we're using uh, the structuring array assignment to um, assign quotes and set quotes as use state, and the, f the parameter uh, that goes into the use state function is our initial state. In that case, it's in our case, it's the empty array. And of course, in order to use use state, we need to import it from React. So we import it just like that. We'll also have a uh, similar line uh, underneath for selected quote index, and we need to uh, have a set selected quote index and the initial. Uh, state there is null. So these two lines here basically replace the initialization of this dot state. The next thing I want to do here is replace the component did mount lifecycle method with a use effect hook. Uh, to do so, we'll call use effect and into it we'll pass a function. Uh, into that function, into that body, we'll um, copy and paste the fetch request that we made in uh, our component did mount uh, method. And I'm also going to update this syntax, this promise.then. I'll instead use async await. So we'll have const of data equaling um, the output of this fetch. And the await keyword here um, tells it that we have to actually wait for that fetch to complete. And the only way we can use await is by adding the keyword async before the uh, parentheses in our arrow function. Um, next, we have a const called quotes. And we have to, again, await for the dot json asynchronous function to finish. 
uh, down here, we actually, instead of this dot set state, we cannot call that anymore. We're now a functional component. Component. There's no such thing as this. There's no such thing as set state. So we actually just want to call the set quotes um, function that we created up here on line 26. So set quotes, and we'll pass it the quotes that we um, got on line 31. Lastly, we want to call the um, assign new quote index function. And um, I just want to point out, again, it's not bound to this anymore since we don't have the binding uh, in the constructor. It's all commented out. It'll be all gone soon. So let's actually go down to our assign new quote index since it's used here. And let's update that. Let's add the function keyword and let's set selected quote index instead of this dot set state and we'll pass it in the call to generate new quote index. Just like that, um, we're all updated. Now, since we're using this function, let's um, update that function. Let's add the function keyword. Let's delete this dot set state. It's no longer this dot set state. It's just a variable quotes, and that's uh, done there. Let's keep scrolling up. Uh, here with our getter function with selected quote, we have a few things to update. We delete this dot set state just like that. But since we're a functional component, we no longer have uh, access to the get keyword. We can no longer create getters. So um, just to fix it really quick, I'll just make a get selected quote uh, function just like that. And whenever I see this dot selected quote, I'll make a call to uh, get selected quote. Um, it's just that easy and it'll make my life a lot easier instead of you know rewriting an entire thing. And let's delete this there. And lastly here, we have this dot props. So we want to actually import props up top. I'm going to like delete this n props there. And up here, we'll use named parameters to import classes. So we can import the um, classes prop just like that. I want to remind you that the parameter that we pass into app uh, is props. And if we use the curly braces, we use uh, name parameters and we can pass in classes just like that. And we can use uh, classes down here. There is no more render function in functional components. We just return the JSX that we want to return. And that's about it. I'm just going to give this a once over. We have to import use effect from React just like that. Now, now that we're all done there, I want you to notice something. Um, basically, when the app is called, uh, use effect is also called data is fetched, um, quotes are set, and then the state changes. Now when that state changes, that triggers a new re-render. That new re-render triggers a new fetch call, which triggers a new quotes to be set, which triggers a new re-render. Do you see the cycle here? So basically we want to tell our application not to continuously re-render. And the way we do that is actually putting a second parameter. That second parameter is an array of uh, variables, state variables, or prop variables to um, look for. If, let's say, we only want to um, rerun this use effect if a quotes changed, we would put quotes here. Now, if we want to only run this once, basically on component did mount, will have an empty array. We avoided the constant re-rendering of the application component um, with the empty array. And one more little gotcha that I see is this assign new quote index call on line 33. Um, when I call that, this calls a set selected quote index and generates a new quote index. Now the generate new quote index will look at the quotes variable now, this quotes variable might actually not be set at the time that this is called. And that's because um, React does some work under the hood, just as, as it did with this dot set state to optimize the, um, 
the times it actually sets the state. So instead of uh, signing new, calling assign new quote index here, I will um, actually set selected quote index to a random um, index between zero and the length of the quotes array minus one. So that'll look like that and um, everything else looks pretty good. Let's look at our application and make sure it's uh, working as uh, we want it to. And you'll see here that it's loading. And yep, here we are. We have our quote uh, machine working just as we want it to. Let's try the Twitter button. And the Twitter button is also working. So um, here in this video, we updated our application to use uh, use effect. It'll use the use state uh, react hook. And it'll also, uh, just as a bonus, use async await. Um, I hope you liked the video. Um, I'll be uploading this code up to GitHub and linking it in the YouTube the description. Um, please like my video. Please click, click subscribe. I hope you enjoy using use state. I hope you enjoy using use effect. They're really, really fun uh, new toys to play with and um, will definitely make your React code a lot, a lot cleaner. I um, hope to see you next time. This is the WebDevCoach. Peace.